Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, in this episode, we're gonna take a quick look at the Flywoo Explore Hex. Yes, six motors, long range. Now, do you remember the Explore that came out long range earlier in the year 2020? Well, here it is right here. This one is actually better than this one. Now you're wondering, why is it better? Well, it has six motors. So the six motors means more stability. You know, if you've ever flown a hex, hexes are way more stable in the air. They just, wind and other things don't really bother them too much. So much more stable. Better at freestyle too, yep. This thing here, when you're doing freestyle because it's so stable, much better than something with only four little motors. And, the other thing that's really weird that I didn't expect is the efficiency on the battery. 30 minutes flight time on this, if you're using the correct battery, it's much more efficient and you would wonder and say, it's got six motors, how can it be more efficient? That's because the motors do not turn as fast as they do on this little guy. So with the six motors, not only is it more efficient, but it can also lift more. You can put a full size GoPro on here, according to Flywoo, I have never tried it, but apparently you can. So let me tell you a little bit more about this, but first, let me show you it flying. Here, check this out. All right, get rid of some of the snow. First things first, power on the DJI radio, comes to life. Next, connect the battery on the hex and it will come to life. Here we go, put that down. All right, let me show you what it looks like in flight, powered on, arm the motors and here we go up. Ooh, she's got some spunk to it with those six motors. Look at this. Whoa, I have to be careful with that. This thing's gonna move. Wow, look at that thing go, look at that. Oh, now I'm really excited to take this out for a flight. All right, so it flies really well, really stable. Got some wind back here, but look at this thing with the six motors. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, let's bring it down for a soft landing right over here in the snow. Turn off the arm switch and uh, there we go. Ready to take it for a longer flight. So that was flying in my backyard in super cold temperatures. And the first thing I noticed is it has more, it has more punch than the older model. The older model didn't have as much punch. This one here seems to have a lot of punch to it. The other thing a lot of you are gonna ask is, well, I saw the motor spinning, but I'm confused. How are they spinning? So if you know the FPV hobby, you have props in, which means they spin inward and props out, they spin outward. So on this here hex, you have props in, the two front ones are props in, the two side ones are actually props in as well. Yeah, they're turning inwards and the two rear ones are props out. They spin outwards. So the next thing I wanna show you is weight. So let me put my little scale over here and move my little Christmas tree out of the way so it doesn't kill my camera. I don't know if my little camera up here is picking up exactly what the display says right now. It's at zero grams. So let me show you the original Flywoo Explorer. Let's put it on there and it weighs. I'm gonna look over here, it weighs 160 grams. That's the original, so let's put the new one on. 216 grams, there we go, 216 grams with nothing on. Let's say you wanna put a battery on it, right? So I flew this baby out in my park and I put a 650 milliamp hour battery, I'll hold it here, I don't think this camera's gonna focus on it, but if it does, so let me just add the 650 milliamp hour battery and see what we come to. What are we at? 200 and... 84 grams with a 654 cell battery. So when I flew with my 650 milliamp hour battery, how many minutes of flight time was I getting? Probably about seven minutes flight time, but it wasn't a good test because it's freezing cold out here. You're gonna see, I'm gonna show you the video of me flying this with my goggles on. It's freezing cold. The battery suffered, so not that great with a 650, but I should have got seven minutes. If I want to get it up to 10 minutes, I'd have to use an 850. So let me see here. And let's put the 850 on it, see what we get. So an 850 milliamp hour battery is giving me, I can't even see this, 324 grams. You see, it's getting heavier, but it can lift an awful lot. If I want at 30 minutes of flight time, I have to use 18650 battery at 3000 milliamp hours. Let me show you the weight with that. So here we go. Ooh, this is going to be heavy. This is going to be heavy. What's it at? What's it at? 418 grams. This little thing weighs 418 grams with that battery. That would give me 30 minutes of flight time. Now, <laughs> now I want to blow your mind. Flywoo says, if you wanted to put a full-size GoPro on here and the 18650 3000 milliamp hour battery, it can fly and lift it, which is like, I haven't tried it. That's a lot of weight. So here's a GoPro Hero 7. It says it will take it. I'm gonna stick it on top. What are we up to on weight? So that means this six motored beast has to lift 535 grams. <laughs> 
wow, you know, the drone weighs under 250 grams and here it's lifting 535. So it's very powerful. So the video I'm gonna show you coming up, I flew this drone with the Insta360 camera, the new one on the market. You probably don't know it exists because it just came out today on the uh, launch of this video. So I'll hold it here so you can see it. That's the box it comes in. So Insta360 sent me this long ago and uh, I reviewed it and uh, you probably see a video of it on my channel today or just check if you're watching this later, it's on my channel. This thing weighs next to nothing and it's designed for drones like this. So if I put the Insta360 camera on here in the front and then I I flew it with a 650 milliamp hour battery and all of that together weighs 316 grams and with that I was getting seven minutes of flight time in the freezing cold weather which is pretty decent and the drone was not affected by any of the weight I just added it didn't feel that way in my hands flying it it flew really well actually uh here check out the video now all right I'm in my jeep and if you ever see me wearing this ridiculous hat this is the hat I wear when it's like freaking cold out and my ears are cold and my head, everything. This is the hat of a Canadian, pretty much, in our cold weather. But I'm in my Jeep right now, so the hat, I'll just leave it over there. All right, so over here, I've got my um, Flywoo Explorer Long Range Hex. Look at that, six motors, pretty cool. And I put on the front the naked Insta360R camera, it's on the front because with this kit came a mount for this camera or a naked GoPro. I just happen to have the Insta360, which records in 4K 60 frames per second. So I'm gonna fly it here. Now it's really cold out and uh, the battery I'm gonna use, cause I'm not gonna fly very far, is this one here. This is a 650 milliamp hour battery. It's a little small for this thing. You're not gonna get a long flight time probably, I don't know, six minutes, seven minutes of flight time with this. But since it's so cold, you're going to have to chop that flight time even less. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go out a bit around. I just want to see how it flies. This is the first flight flying with goggles on. And for goggles, hang on. They're in my back seat here. And for goggles, I have to use the DJI FPV goggles because it is a CADX Vista in the front, which is a digital camera. So I have to use these goggles. And for radio, this is pretty cool. So I've got a crossfire in here. You see this? See this? Can you see that antenna? I'll put it up against the window. See this line going across? That's a crossfire antenna. So there's a crossfire receiver in here. You can't see it, but I'll point at it. Well, maybe I'll show a video of where it is. You can sort of see it there. So it comes inside. Now, since I have the CADEX Vista, it defaults to use the DJI FPV radio. If I want to switch over to crossfire, I just go into beta flight and change some settings and then it ignores this and it will use crossfire which is pretty cool so i've ordered a crossfire unit because i don't have one and uh, when that gets here i'll take it out again and fly it with crossfire just to see how it flies obviously it's going to fly exactly the same the difference is out of the box if you have dji out of the box you're going to fly uh, four kilometers over two miles that's out of the box you know you're not really doing anything it's just going to fly that far if you use crossfire then you know you have your range is crazy. You can go like, I don't know, if you modify it, you can go like 20 kilometers farther. It's insane what you can do with Crossfire because it's just a different frequency of communication. So out of the box with Crossfire, probably going to get quite a few kilometers, quite a few miles with Crossfire with this thing. It's a way too cold in the winter to fly long range, but in the summertime, this would be a blast for many of you. All right, enough of me talking. Uh, let's go fly this. <laughs> it's cold. Okay, let's see if... What's that? Oh, that's just this thing. All right, so let's see if Nanook of the North here could put these goggles over this crazy hat. Oh, this is so ridiculous looking. Oh my God. Women will never talk to me again if they see me wearing this. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, hang on, where's my fingers? I think we're all good to go. So I'm gonna hit arm. Armed, make sure an acro mode, acro mode, and uh, let's take it up. Go for a nice smooth flight. Going along the ground here, through the trees, nice. Very smooth, six motors, how does it fly you ask? Well, let me just tell you now, with my frozen fingers, it flies freaking awesome. Ooh, people over there don't want to go over them. So go back this way over our ice field. If you look at my digital camera up front, you can see the props are in the frame and you can see the angle I'm at pushing through the wind. But there we go. It's not bad. <laughs> Could you hear it in the mic, the wind just a howling? It's pretty darn cold. 
There goes my drone over top. Here, I'll bring it back to me. There we are up there. And if you want to do some cool maneuvers like this, I'm going up sideways, but let's flip the other way. Sweet. Nice. No problems with flips and freestyles. That was a perfect flip. I don't think we'll see any kids over in the park. I'm going to come down low because it's just too cold. It's just crazy cold. You know, for a drone this light and with a heavy battery on, it's certainly got a lot of thrust and power. I can punch out at any moment. Zoom around things, no problem there. Look at how fast I'm going. This is really good. Go over here, try not to hit anything. Wow. There's our clubhouse over here for the park. Whoa, it's just so cold. So this thing here, you know, I have zero complaints. Matter of fact, I have nothing but love for this. It is uh, super powerful. See, this drone is so good. You can fly it low to the ground like look at this. This is uh, really good for a, a quad because then you have a lot of features and options you can do with it. There I am right there, hanging out in front of my Jeep. It's just hovering here, no problem. And uh, yeah, just go on over. Watch out for that tree. Where's my landing pad? There it is right there. There we are. Here I am. Do I look ridiculous with this on? <laughs> look at all. Oh, if anybody sees me, they're wondering, what the hell's that guy doing? Now you saw during that flight, I showed you the video coming out of this lovely Insta360 new naked camera. I'll put links below to where you can find this Insta360 camera naked. It's pretty cool because it records at 4K 60 frames per second. Now the other thing, uh, you saw the video coming out from the digital camera in the front of this here drone. You also saw that that digital camera has the props in the frame. You could see the props in the motors. So you're probably not gonna really record quality video with that camera. You're gonna have to attach a GoPro or a naked GoPro or an Insta360 Go, some type of small camera, run cam or something on the top so that you get quality video if you're going long range and you wanna check things out. Now I have to tell you, this video is being made long before this drone is released. Flywoo sent me this like a week ago. So you're watching this on the day it was released and I got it, you know, before. Um, so basically I've flown it before and I only have the specs that they sent me and they didn't send me very much, but they told me about the cameras. And if I find it here, the HD camera in this, I, apparently it's the new, uh, Cadex Nebula Pro camera. So the image you saw, it's the new Cadex Nebula Pro. And if you get this analog, in other words, you pay less, you have an analog system, you don't have to have the digital system. So if you get an analog camera, the camera they're gonna stick into it is the, according to the specs here, the Goku HM 600 milliwatt VTX. So 600 milliwatts is an awful lot. So this is definitely long range if it's shooting at 600 milliwatts in analog. Now, another thing you saw in the video is that I mentioned that when I received this here Explorer Hex, it had two receivers in it. One receiver for the DJI FPV radio and another receiver for the Crossfire system. You only use Crossfire. Usually if you're flying analog and not digital, you definitely use would want to use Crossfire because the range is it's exceptionally far. Normally when you're using digital, eh, you probably default to using, you know, the DJI system and not bother with Crossfire. But if you want to go farther, then you have to add the Crossfire module. So if I wanted to go like, I don't know, 15 or 20 kilometers away, I would probably put a Crossfire system in here and really bump up the milliwatts so that I have lots of transmission range. The cool thing is, is when I looked at this in beta flight, it has seven UARTs on the flight controller and uh, both receivers are right there. And I could pick which one I want to use. Do I want to use DJI or I want to use Crossfire? It's that simple. Now, since I have no specs on this drone other than what they sent me, I'm making this video way before the specs come out, I'll read off what they sent me about the flight controller. So it's an F7 flight controller, 16 by 16 stack. It's made specifically for the hex system. It's got seven UARTs. That's how I could have the two receivers, no issues and pick between the two. It's got a barometer in it. It's got a black box. And here's something cool. It has actually a LED light system in it. You know how we fly our camera drones like DJI and other drones in most countries, you have to have a blinky light that's blinking so that other planes and stuff can see you. It's got a blinky light system in the flight controller. So here I'm showing video of it right now. Yeah, so it just blinks when it's flying. So if you fly it in the evening or you're flying it in the daytime, you can, you can see it. And a really cool thing they added to this is the Bluetooth Nano 
module. Inside, I'll show you a picture of it where it is. You're looking at the video right now. I'm pointing at it. There's a Bluetooth nano module in there and basically that will talk to your phone and you can do all your beta flight settings out in the field right on your phone so let me show you i'm just going to power this on really quick i'll connect to the bluetooth and you'll see me do it right here and i'll just show you what the interface looks like all right to show you the bluetooth interface i've already connected it to my radio and you're probably wondering why is he using a different radio no that's because i have crossfire in the back check that out yes i upgraded the crossfire all right i'll get back to that in a bit so I have the drone sitting here and my phone. The Bluetooth module is already transmitting. It's transmitting whenever you connect the battery. So all I have to do is tell my phone, connect to the Bluetooth, which I've done in the past. So it will connect automatically. So on my phone screen, there's a little SpeedyB app. You just download it. I'm using an iPhone here. So I download it and right at the bottom, it says you want Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You can see the little icons at the bottom. I'm going to click on Bluetooth and it will start talking to this baby because look at that. It found all the Bluetooth items around my house. There we go, we should be getting something and there we are. So uh, over here, my phone is held up over here. So what you see over here is what my phone sees. So down the left hand side is basically Betaflight. So I can click on any item. Watch this, if I move my drone, it should move on the screen as you see it moving here, just like you would in Betaflight. I can set up anything I want. Uh, I can go down to cool little things like this. I'm going to the one with the parachute which is probably going to be my fail-safe items. Yeah, fail-safe. And you can set that up because that's one thing we set up in the field a lot of times. If I wanted to change uh, receivers, going from Crossfire to uh, back to DJI, I could do that in the field, which I've never tried. <laughs> it would be interesting. I've never tried it. But uh, yeah, you can set up all the stuff, uh, even my satellites uh, right there. And I can go to my normal settings, my receiver. Hang on a sec. This is the one a lot of people like to do in the phone in the field. I should mention this one is your modes. So there's my modes right there. Anyways, it's all built in so you can set it up while you're out in the field or even at home. So you don't even have to connect to your uh, computer here and do the beta flight. Now in the original Flywoo Explorer, there was a beeper in it, a finder, so that if you lost this here drone um, and the battery died, because maybe you lost it because you ran your battery down or it landed, you couldn't find it because it went out of range, there's a beeper in it. So this one has the same thing. The beeper is on the rear and if I take this and disconnect this battery, the beeper will engage. Let me just disconnect and we should hear a beeper going pretty soon. Telemetry lost. Yes, I know telemetry's lost because I just unplugged it. Thank you, radio. So this beeper that you're hearing now, there you go. <laughs> it, uh, it will run for five hours. So you've got five hours to find your drone with that beeper going. And if it gets dark out, you have a light. Can you see that? There we go, see the little light? Now, as I mentioned, I did buy myself a Crossfire module. They cost, I don't know, in the US, they're $60 or $70. You can see it right here in the back. And basically I stuck it in this radio because this radio is open TX. So basically when you get the Crossfire module, let me just pull it out, it comes out really easy. And there we go. So that is the module right there. That's all you need. It's pretty simple. There's nothing to it. You just put it in the back of your radio. You tell your radio to use the external module because you don't want to use internal because internal is your radio communicating. You tell it to use external, just pick your model and uh, select Crossfire and that's it. And then go into your menu and click on bind, bind it to this baby and you're all set. And if you get stuck and you don't know how to do anything, just email Flywoo because I asked them the same question and they already have the instructions and they're really simple. And if you want to see me flying the hex using Crossfire in the freezing cold, watch this. All right, I'm out here again and I have the Radio Master TX16S with the Crossfire unit module in the back all set up so uh, let's go fly it with crossfire now i'm not going to do a range test because a i'm in canada we're not allowed to fly far second thing is it's really cold out uh, there is the temperature in celsius and fahrenheit today so what i'm going to do is uh, just fly it and maybe i'll try going a little bit lower and behind things because i should have some good penetration with this little tiny antenna it does look kind of weird but it's crossfire, it's supposed to be really good, so let's go. So on this here camera, I've put the ND filter, ND16, which uh, should reduce any of the vibrations. All right, let's check it out. All right, let's arm this. Arm motors. And let's put an acro mode. Angle mode, acro mode. And uh, let's go. And we'll take it low to the ground here. Because with crossfire, I should get some awesome penetration. So let's go lower under the trees 
There we go, nice smooth flight. It's really cold out here today, so I don't know how well this battery is going to do in this cold. I'm just keeping it low so I get uh, really awesome penetration with this crossfire. Whoa, that was close. Look at this, ice on this here waterbed. Whoa, check that out. Don't want to lose signal over this or else this thing's good. Long. It's going to go, <laughs> I'm going to take it up again. <laughs> This is quite far. I'm going behind the school and I'm going to take it around. All the way around the school. There we go. I'm taking it slow, not going super fast. Just going slow because I don't want to uh, drain the battery too much with the cold that's out here. Now the school is in the way of me. Oh, my video reception's going out. Whoa, these <laughs> goggles. Because I'm the school's in the way, it's messing everything up. Okay, so let's bring it back down. Seems like it's doing well. All right, let's go this way. Now, my goggles are not facing. I'll have to turn towards where this drone is. Uh, I'd have to be facing this field because I have the uh, patch antenna on my DJI goggles. And uh, you have to be facing in the direction pretty much of where your drone is. So I have to kind of turn my head over. All right, and over here uh, where my Jeep is, uh, you'll see a van and that is Steve. Steve is one of the guys who flies FPV with me and he just saw me out here and he's wondering what am I doing? So let's go check out Steve in his van. He might even be having his uh, DJI goggles on and uh, checking out what's going on. Let's see, can I see him in the car? Yeah, I don't know. I'll just buzz him. He always buzzes me when I'm out here. All right, let's go back over to me. There we are over here. Try to get a nice little landing in front of me here. Good enough, there we are. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you is what comes in the box, so check this out. In the box comes a mount for the Naked Insta360. I don't know if the GoPro, Naked GoPro, will fit into that. I'm guessing it probably will. Other items in the box would be a full spare set of props, so you can destroy all six props and you get six extra props, plus the screws and the hardware you'll need, plus you get stickers, plus you get some specifications on the actual F7 flight controller, just in case you want to wire it up differently. So with all of that said, this is easily the best long range drone on the market in the year 2020. Certainly in 12 months from now, there'll probably be a better one. But for right now, for the next, I don't know, six months, this is the one to get. So the good thing is if you order it now, I'm looking over at my laptop because they sent me this. I This is what they sent me, so I'm just gonna repeat it. I don't know if it's true. It says, if you order this today when you're watching this video, so I'm showing this like the day it's launched, all orders will be shipped before North American Christmas. So if you order it today, it's going to be shipped before Christmas. Doesn't mean you'll get it Christmas, but shipped before. And it says if you buy any of the bind and fly units, in other words, they don't have to do anything special to it, you will get an 8% discount. So I, I assume, I don't know how long that 8% lasts, but anyways, there's an 8% discount on right now. Plus they have a pile of other discounts and I'll put links to them below. So check the links below this video for all the discounts and everything else. All right guys, so that sums up my review. If you have questions on the Explorer, just post them below and I will get back to you. If you haven't checked out my review of the Insta360 4K, check it out. It says SMO 4K. I don't know what the SMO stands for. I'm sure I figured it out by now. Watch that review. It's pretty cool. That's probably gonna be the hottest naked camera on the market for anybody in the RC hall that wants something light so you fly a plane, a glider, a helicopter, or a drone. Light, light camera on top for excellent video quality. So check that out. And with all that said, I say thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will catch you in future videos with many more drone reviews. Take care.